Favorite jingle is back. People of power, a very good morning to you. 10 minutes past 10, that sound in your ear. It's Power ninety eight point seven, and the voice is myself, Lukoda Lupawa Mguni, back on the airwaves with you. We now turn to a segment uh, that, of course, started with the Knoxman uh, last week, uh, looking at the Gauteng Provincial Government Annual Report Assessments. Of course, the provincial legislatures act as oversight bodies into the Executive Committee of the province. And as part of implementing the Gauteng Provincial Legislature's oversight mandate, the Gauteng Provincial Legislature committees have recently undertaken a process of assessing performance of the provincial government departments and the GPL for the 2020-2021 financial year. We also know that, of course, uh, this is helped uh, in most instances by the work done by the Auditor General of South Africa, who publishes those PFMA reports on national departments and provincial departments and their entities that are attached to the government. I'll be joined this morning by Portfolio Committee Chairpersons, uh, Rafil Wekekana, Social Development. William Matseke is with Sports, Recreation, Arts and Culture. And of course, Matume Chilwane joins me on the line with the Department of Education. Let me start with you, Matume. Good morning and welcome to Part Talk. Uh, good morning to you and to your listeners. William, a good morning and welcome to Power Talk. Good morning, Lukona, and good morning to your listeners. Rufilwe, a good morning and welcome to Power Talk. Good morning, Lukona, and good morning to all the listeners of Gauteng. Uh, since we've been talking about the Formula One this morning a lot, let me start off with the sports uh, portfolio, perhaps. <laughs> uh, just give us a sense. When we say you are conducting uh, assessments of performance you know on the annual report what is it exactly that you are doing as the legislature but in particular as this portfolio committee tasked with oversight on the department of sports uh, recreation arts and culture no thanks uh, lukona the responsibility of the committee is enshrined in the constitution uh, the, the oversight role of the portfolio committee is as prescribed in the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, Section 14, Subsection 2A and B, and the standing rules, uh, Section 152, Subsection 7, the Gauteng Legislature, makes it imperative for the committee to provide an analytical assessment on the overall performance of the Gauteng Department of Sports, Arts, Culture, and Recreation. Uh, right now, we are looking at the 2020-2021 financial year uh, of the annual report on how the department could have performed, like you have indicated, um, informed also by what uh, the findings of the Auditor General. Our responsibility as the Portfolio Committee is to scrutinize the report, looking at whether the department managed to uh, reach their targets, uh, how they would have spent in terms of the budget allocation for the previous financial year. So it's exactly what we do as the portfolio committee. The portfolio committee is made up of uh, multi-party uh, members, uh, which we will, uh, in, in the instance where we are doing oversight over the department, will then call stakeholders to make inputs uh, over the annual report. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we look at program by program on the budget allocated for, for the year under review and how each and every KPA of the department will have been uh, met by the department and in instances where they will not have met their KPAs based on the budget allocation, will then be able to uh, raise concerns and then will then recommend to the department on areas where they will need mm. to improve. 
I mean, really, of course, the mandate of the portfolio committees is fairly similar and the same. It just differs in terms of which department really uh, you are conducting oversight on. And I mean, I was looking at the recent consolidated report issued by the Auditor General. I mean, fairly, uh, the departments in Gauteng are doing fairly well in terms of audit outcomes. Uh, the three departments that I'm chatting with actually today, you are both on uh, EMBA, which is unqualified with findings. I mean, that means there's point of possible improvement, but uh, generally unqualified, you can account for what you what was done with the money and so on. But as the portfolio committee, how do you define performance? Because as I was listening to the AG last week, she made a very clear point that, you know, uh, generally we don't do the sort of substantive audit as the auditor general, but she sort of said, yeah, we did a few for the infrastructure projects because we wanted to check if they are being done well and delivered on time. But for you as a portfolio committee, how do you measure performance of a department, especially a department as important as social development? Thank you very much, uh, Lukona. <clears throat> I think first of all, we look at the, all the programs that uh, the department are involved in and look at how they performed against their targets. And we also look at the element of, uh, you know, the financial performance of the department to say that out of this budget, how did they spend this budget? And if they did not spend it adequately, where are the shortfalls? Where did they not spend the budget adequately? And why did they not spend the budget? So we really focus on the financial performance as well as the service delivery performance, you know, to, to just to check as to why they could not meet their targets. And in this instance, because of COVID, we did find that uh, some of the targets could not be met and basically because of the COVID-19 conditions. And in your sense, which ones are most likely not to be met or in your view, as you were looking at the uh, report, the annual report, which all with all these KPAs, as uh, uh, William said, uh, which ones did you feel that, you know, were not well met and be it's because COVID-19 was probably an intervening factor? Yeah, you see, uh, like in the instance of, um, you know, home-based care and in the instance of, uh, you know, old age facilities yep. where there are community-based facilities where old people could not gather as they usually would. You know, they would gather, have meals, you know, maybe go through some exercises and all that. And because of the COVID-19 uh, situation, and you know that the old elderly are the most vulnerable, they couldn't go out to those facilities mm. to, to do their normal activities, you know. Yeah. So there was that, that challenge around that. So they could, uh, they understand in that uh, instance. Absolutely. I'm going to come back to you, I want to go to Matume, but when I do come back to you, I do want us to have a chat a little about how you feel, you know, the Gauteng Department of Social Development is managing with this idea that if you read a lot of the norms and standard documents of that department, especially at a national level, this uh, vision of a developmental social development rather than a welfarian uh, social development where really, you know, you, you, you unleash people's capabilities and potential through social development. Like to find out how that happens. But Matume, let me bring you in, of course, uh, just before talking to you in our open line and a number of people already complaining about certain things things, including uh, still being uncertain as to where their kids will be attending school um, in Gauteng this year. With all the extensions that have been given by the department, they still have not met their side of uh, the bargain. Now, this is a huge performance area because it directly affects families and the potential and future of children. Um, is this something that uh, you look into as well while you conduct this uh, annual performance assessment? Yes, uh, it's, it's one of those uh, uh, pending issues. Matume, please come closer to your mic. Um, if yes, you're on loudspeaker, uh, please take it off loudspeaker. Okay, let me do Audible. Faintly, but let's try. 
Okay, Matume, I'm going to ask to take that line back to my producers, Nete and uh, We'll attend to it and bring it back to you. Perhaps, let me come back to that question before I forget it, as I was asking, you know, um, uh, people, when they think of social development, uh, sometimes colloquially in uh, public discourse, some will talk about uh, handouts. Uh, no, it's a department that gives handouts. But the department really wants to see itself as developmental, hence uh, the idea of workshops, for example, for some sections of society. How do you think that the Gauteng Provincial Department of Social Development is doing in develop, de you know, deploying that developmental aspect of social development? Yes, uh, thank you, Lukona. You know, there's a the type of one million in Gauteng. So uh, the department uh, also partners with the Tepo One Million initiatives to try to provide jobs for the much needed uh, in the much needed uh, communities in the term in terms of skills development and putting people on EPWP uh, work programs and also to look at you know these uh, women who receive grants we put them in they put them in programs where they can you know actually exit the mm. grant system so mm. that they are able to work maybe as caregivers or you know develop their skills so that they can sustain their livelihoods so in most cases uh, those people are put through those uh, youth pro uh, programs for instance in this past uh, financial year they've been able to provide about 349 youth internship through the TEPA 1 million initiative. And they also created 14,586 uh, public, work, public works program opportunities and what is, we call the welfare to work programs. So those are, 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 are the initiatives yeah. that they do. And they also employ the use of cooperatives, mostly women uh, cooperatives who are able to supply dignity packs and school uniforms mm. so that they can then procure from the department and then they can offer those services. Yeah. Yeah. So the, that's another way of empowering uh, the women. Fantastic. We're going to continue this conversation. I see Matume, you're back on the line. Just be patient with me. I'm told that I've got to pay some bills. People of power, it is 21 minutes past 10. I am in conversation with portfolio committees for social development, sports, recreation, arts and culture and education in the Gauteng Provincial Legislature. Since 1998, the Hatfield Motor Group has been building the highest levels of customer satisfaction and our business pulse has never been stronger. Our dealers offer benchmark service and quality repairs at affordable prices. If your Audi or Volkswagen needs a service, minor or major repair, talk to us and let us quote you on parts and labor. We have dealers in Hatfield, Ravonia, Bryanston, Bramfontein, Melrose and Northcliffe. Why have your VW or Audi serviced anywhere else? Hatfieldgroup.co.za Rated number one in service. Nine AM to noon. This is Power Talk on Power ninety eight point seven. Let's get back straight to it. Twenty two minutes past ten here on Power Talk. Matume Chilwane is the Education Court for Committee Chairperson. In how dare now you were saying that this is definitely one of the banning issues. The issue of the online registration for children. I mean, what a bizarre story. A, 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 a person uh, whose child is in grade R at a school but has to apply for them to be in the same school for grade one. I mean, this is serious issues. Uh, what is your concern or take on this matter as the committee? No, as a committee, remember this online registration is, uh, has been going on for quite a number of years. And uh, thus far, we, as a committee, we've been happy with how. Uh, it's, it's been, it's been uh, implemented. Um, what I can assure parents is that their, their children will be placed in schools, uh, albeit the school, you know, uh, 
generally uh, parents prefer certain schools, uh, maybe due to performance of the school, etc. But they will be placed, and uh, and and so and and of late, all our schools have been doing quite well. I mean, if you look at the uh, the metric pass rate, for instance, uh, mm. the province have been getting over eighty percent. Uh, it's either number one or number two in the country. Uh, considering the number of learners that would be sitting to write their metric, it's uh, it's quite substantial. So they've been doing quite quite well in that regard. So I think parents just must have confidence that. Uh, an authority that their children will be placed. There is no child who will not be placed in the province. Yeah. The, that's the commitment that we, the department has made to the committee. Uh, we are now looking at that process very closely. Yeah. As well. Let, let's talk a little about some of the things you've picked out in this financial year of 2020-2021 in the uh, you know, report of the Department of uh, Basic Education. What are some of the things that stand out for you? Uh, the department generally performed quite well uh, in terms of uh, budget spend. They spend over 96% of their allocation. And uh, if, you, if you, it's just one or two programs, uh, for instance, uh, because of the pandemic, as my, 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 my colleague here, uh, Rufilo has spoken to and William, that obviously some of the programs, or that, uh, they will not be able to spend all of it. But because, but, Besides that, overall, in terms of where they could spend, they spend their budget allocation, and uh, obviously we hold them accountable according to their annual plans, their APPs, and uh, most of the objectives they did manage to to meet. So generally, we as a committee, we 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 are happy with the performance of the department. Um, uh, please note that education is big. You know, yeah. it's not. Uh, it's quite a big uh, portfolio on its own. So some of the programs are quite larger in terms of, and they do take have a, a much longer uh, time frame to execute. But generally, those uh, short-term deliverables uh, uh, they have, uh, they did manage to achieve. Of course, we know that. Of course, we know that perfection is a pursuit that is a never-ending one. Uh, but what are some of the areas where you are most concerned that things are not moving as quick as they ought to? Uh, firstly, it's infrastructure. <clears throat> we are not uh, happy with the uh, the time frame of building uh, new schools. As you know, uh, uh, Gauteng, because of its 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 its, its structure, development, growth, and economic opportunities. There's a lot of uh, inward migration, uh, and that obviously puts pressure on our schools in terms of uh, the number of learners applying. So the, the pace of building new schools is quite slow. Yeah, uh, That is one, one concern. Uh, secondly, in terms of uh, learning and teaching, we are concerned with the number of uh, learners uh, pursuing uh, gateway subjects, that's including maths, uh, and science, we, we, we think that there should be more learners and there should be more investment in that regard. Yeah. Um, and also, we obviously, we've got special schools. Uh, mm. uh, there's a need to have more special schools. And uh, they've got a program of school specialization, which is uh, quite uh, on its own. And it's, 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 it's a program that we think that, you know, there should be more, you know, that allows learners and when they get to, especially in, the higher, in high school, then they should be we're able to focus them in a particular field. Uh, okay. There should be more of that. Uh, so those are some of the areas. But generally, we, we are happy with the performance of the, the department. Got you loud and clear, but you may, I'm quite familiar with that attempt, you know, in KZN with uh, quite worked closely with the department there, trying to create these schools, you know, whether it's for agriculture or robotics and so on. William, let me come back to you. Uh, Matumi talks about, you know, being unhappy with infrastructure delivery. Now, in your department, this is a huge area, especially in terms of transforming the sporting landscape in communities, particularly around your township areas and so on. I know that there was a point in time then MEC was very passionate about her combi courts and that she wants her combi courts to be delivered. What's your sense, though, of delivery of sporting infrastructure to make sure that, you know, uh, there are black cricketers who don't have to go to uh, some of the best schools in the country for them to make it 
uh, to the Proteas, and that there's really just a, a fair democratized way of participating at the highest level of sport. And we still cry about this. We are a fair way into this democracy. Yeah, no, indeed, uh, uh, Lukona. I think uh, taking from where my colleague, uh, Honorable Chilwan, will have indicated, uh, part of our concerns is on the infrastructure project of the department. Um, there are quite an, uh, a number of outstanding projects, um, like your Women Living Heritage Monument, uh, which is an uh, outstanding project. It's uh, been constructed, I think, since 2015. Uh, the Puipatong Monument, your Kahiso Monument. Together with the Wipatong, but the issue is on the operation part of those particular monuments. Quite correctly, the issue as it relates to the Combi Courts, uh, for the past two financial years, the department have been struggling to build any new uh, Combi Courts, uh, since obviously the, the issue that relates to how the former MEC will have raised the issue that relates to the Combi Courts. But however, we've also uh, picked up that there are quite a number of challenges as it relates to the stadiums, uh, your HMP stadium is not in a very good state. Yeah. Uh, there have been a number of complaints mm. uh, that the community uh, of that area will have raised with us. Uh, we have uh, convened a stakeholder engagement session with them uh, to really address uh, the issue as it relates to, the, uh, to that. The Pofandrenen Stadium in uh, Mohali City, uh, it's one area where you also spoke something very close to my heart. It relates to the impact on service delivery on the ground. Uh, that stadium in that area uh, used to produce quite a number of uh, athletes yeah. uh, for the Olympics. And if you look, if you would have looked at uh, the number of black athletes that would have represented our team in the previous Olympics, it was not a very good picture. Equally, as it uh, relates to to swimming, um, a number of our schools they they really they don't produce black swimmers, and it's one area that we've uh, really. Uh, ask the department to look into one area that is also... Let, let's hold that thought, William. I'll, I'll let you finish off. I've just got to run to Power News headlines with Katia Kolekhodi, and then after that, uh, get you to wrap up that thought that you had, and people of power, uh, the line will be open to you, 0861-987-000. I promise you I could never, ever uh, hog your public representatives all to myself. Katia Kolekhodi is uh, standing by with Power News headlines. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Good morning. We just making headlines at this hour. Members of the Tuane Taxi Industry have joined hands in the fight against the killing of taxi drivers and commuters in the city. They've also raised issues with robberies that are happening while commuters are in transit by armed thugs or syndicates. A motorcade has been organized by the taxi industry in the CBD this morning over these issues. While motorists have been cautioned to take note of traffic dis disruptions around the Tuane CBD on Student Street and right into Sopiti Brain Street. Fronted yeah. Broad Street, Lillian and Boy Street, and Blue no, Street, no. among others. In other news, it looks like it will be a <clears> bleak <throat> Christmas for ANC staff members as they're still not paid their outstanding salaries. There are reports that the party is scrambling to raise around 200 million rand <clears> to cover <throat> its debt and pay employees before Christmas. The party has a salary bill of more than 12 million rand due to unpaid salaries for the months of October, November, and December. Last month, employees are picketed outside its headquarters, the House, and at the provincial offices over the non-payments of their salaries. And a couple from Tembisa is set to appear at the Zerast Magistrates Court today after being found in position of a lion's head. Two suspects, aged 62 and 54, were arrested this past weekend in Zerast in a sting operation involving the Hawks. The crime, has been, the, the crime of being in position of a lion's head is the <clears throat> intervention of the National Environment and Management Diversity Act. I have more details on this and other stories at the top of the hour. Or traffic.
Indeed you are, and it is 25 minutes to the hour, 11 o'clock. I've got my guests uh, right up till the top of the hour. Rafil Wekekana, Social Development Committee Chairperson, William Matseke, uh, Sports, Recreation, Arts and Culture Committee Chairperson, Matume Chilwane, Education Committee Chairperson. William, just before that uh, break for news headlines, you were completing a point. Uh, you had spoken about Mukhale City. You, had spoke, you were talking and wrapping around the state of swimming and just the sheer lack of black swimmers in this country and this province as well, at least who go and compete at those very highest levels. Yes, indeed, uh, uh, <coughs> Lukona, I was indicating that, um, uh, though uh, Chairperson Matumi will have also indicated that COVID-19 regulations uh, will have uh, dealt with a number of uh, uh, key performance areas of the department. One of those areas is on school sports. Uh, one of the, uh, during our engagement, I mean, with the department and the MEC, uh, we've raised a concern as it relates to the investment that we do as it relates to uh, swimming. Uh, we've done a number of oversight visits uh, to a number of uh, swimming pools around the province. And we've realized that in townships, uh, uh, the province has not done well in investing on infrastructure as it relates to swimming and one of the areas that they uh, we said they must really look into is to making sure that we promote uh, swimming uh, amongst uh, uh, black schools so that we at the end of the day uh, uh, produce uh, uh, black swimmers uh, for the olympic uh, team uh, just also maybe to indicate that the, the department has done fairly well in terms of their targets they've reached 81 percent of their annual targets with an expenditure of 81.7% of their financial expenditure. The Gauteng Film Commission mm. uh, will have reached quite a number of their uh, targets, uh, though uh, they received a clean audit, uh, but the budget allocation uh, for that agency is one area of concern for us as a committee, uh, that they are allocated around 39 million, and uh, 21 million of uh, that budget allocation goes towards compensation of employees. Yeah. And you, on, you are only left with around 18 million uh, for goods and services, which is not enough. Uh, Uh, Houting uh, to make sure that the people of uh, the, uh, the, the film industry, they film within uh, Houting. So those are the areas yeah. that we have picked up as part of our concerns. Okay, zero eight six one nine eight seven triple zero is the dial. Rafula, let me come back to you. Uh, this issue of targets keeps coming up. Sometimes when I read annual performance plans of departments, I wonder whether uh, you know there would have been some research that is there to inform these targets. Sometimes we find we will train 500 people this year, 300 next year, 400 that year. What really informs some of these targets? Are you happy? Uh, because I do know that there has been an attempt to rework uh, the way in which departments write their strategic uh, plans and uh, so of course also inform their uh, APPs. Are you happy with how, you know, social development arrives at its, you know, targets in the APPs? And I'm asking this because there's still a huge cry, especially in this province, uh, for rehabilitation centers on drug and substance abuse. And we don't seem to be resolving this issue. What are some of your views on that? No, thank you very much, Lukona. I think um, what informs uh, their targets would be their experience in the previous years to say that uh, in this year we were able to achieve so much. So based on that, they are able to project what they can achieve in the coming financial year. However, sometimes there are hiccups that happens in the department. You find that perhaps if they had planned 25 strategic uh, targets, for instance, you find that they would achieve 15 as is in the case in the 2020-21 financial mm. year. On the strategic priorities that they had, out of the 25 planned targets, they were only managed, uh, they only managed to fully achieve 15 of those. Mm. Three of those were partia partially achieved. And four targets was on poor progress. And about two of those were not achieved at all. But then when 
we sit down with them, we try to drill down to What's understand why they did not meet the targets. You find that sometimes, a, you know, there's an explanation, you know, with regards to why they could not meet the targets. But then it will depend whether as a portfolio committee we accept that or not. But if it's a reasonable response, we, we are able to give them time to say that in the next financial year, this is what you must do. We want to see an improvement in this regard. For instance, the issue of the, the, the school uniforms and the dignity packs. It's it's one of the great uh, concern to us because mm -hmm. they are unable to meet that target with empowering uh, the cooperatives. But then they had a problem with the procurement processes. And you know, procurement, you, you cannot bypass, you know, going through the right processes. So they ended up not meeting their target because of uh, those procurement processes they could not procure from certain uh, cooperatives and as a result as a result they could not uh, achieve in that respect and that also uh, resulted in the under expenditure just quickly on that one refilo when there is underperformance and you are not satisfied with the response that you receive on a particular point, what's the nature of consequence management that exists that you can implement as a portfolio committee on the department? As a, a portfolio committee, we can only recommend because remember, we do not give instructions directly to the department in terms of consequence management. We always have consequent management. But because we can speak to the MEC directly as the political head, we are able to say, put pressure on the MEC to apply consequence management. And that will be her decision to take with the HOD so that there is consequence management. But that's an area that uh, we always focus on mm. because when we are, every time we are unhappy about something that is not being done according to, 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 to protocol, we always have consequence management. And just quickly on rehabilitation centers, what's your sense? Because I mean, we have a, I mean, I get a lot of calls of people complaining about drug and substance abuse, the infiltration of drugs and just cheap uh, human uh, health affecting drugs like your nyaupes and all of these things. Uh, what's your sense in terms of the department assisting to help with this, especially for those young people who would love to be rehabilitated and some reintegrated with their families as well? Yeah, I think that the department is doing quite well, fairly well with it. It's just that the scale of the drug abuse in our country is very huge. But our department has got a footprint in every region where there are drug rehabilitation centers. And now and again, we do get calls even as a portfolio committee to say, you know, we need a referral to a drug rehabilitation center and would make contact with the department so that uh, whoever can be taken in as a resident in that uh, rehabilitation center. But you find that there's challenges around it. Most of the drug uh, people who use drugs, you know, it, it it's up to them to decide when to leave. Even when they are placed at these rehabilitation centers, some of them, you know, you end up, they end up leaving the rehabilitation centers because they are not ready to actually be rehabilitated, you know. But uh, most of the centers that are, we have visited as a portfolio committee, they're quite secure. There's medicals uh, taken, for, you know, for, as they uh, admit them. They check them to see that they are medically fit. If they are not, there's a doctor who will, you know, give them treatment and then they will try to give them medication to win them off the drugs and the facilities are well taken care of and, you know, under safe conditions and all that. But there are quite a number of uh, drug rehabilitation centers in the province. Fantastic. Matume, let me come back to you from an education perspective. Before I go to you, Aubrey, on the line, I see you on 0861-987-000. Uh, your colleague here, William, raises... Uh, really the issue that you know sometimes units or departments uh, suffer from having to use a substantial uh, share of their budget for personnel costs and this is a serious issue for the department of basic education where the bulk of the budget tends to go to personnel costs how do you say you are doing in terms of ratio of that uh, breakdown of the budget uh, in Gauteng are you happy that 
the Department of Education in Gauteng is trying to do something to free up more resources. But as we have that conversation, another issue that sometimes departments struggle with is the concept of vacancy ratio. Uh, where are you as a department and how is it looking? Are you happy? Just those two things, please. Okay. Uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, the, in terms of... Uh, let me just educate us in this regard. Uh, there is uh, the ratio is still a bit skewed because in some instances, because the ratio should be one at uh, an educator to 35 learners, and as you know, as I indicated earlier with uh, my inward migration into our province, uh, sometimes that ratio gets compromised. Uh, you find that a teacher is sitting with uh, 40 plus learners uh, in front of him or her. So in that regard, we, 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 as a committee, we did recommend that there should be all the vacancies that are available, they should be, uh, they should be covered uh, <clears throat> uh, quickly as possible. And as uh, according to the report, uh, over 50% of the vacancies that were, were highlighted in the previous year uh, currently have, have been placed. So they are, they are doing quite well in that regard. Uh, but obviously 100% vacancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'd know that obviously uh, the teacher uh, community, educator community is, uh, is an old profession, so some of our educators are, are close to mm -hmm. retirement. Yeah. So that is an, also another issue, but we, we did raise it with, 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 the depart, with the department that we don't, we don't want to see, expect a process where there's a delay uh, when a teacher goes on pension in terms of uh, uh, replacing that teacher, you know. Uh, so schools, uh, SGBs have, you know, uh, so schools, uh, SGBs have, Please try again later.